American is the latest climber to die on Mount Everest. Colorado attorney Chris Coolish collapsed on his way down after reaching the summit. He is at least the 11th fatality there this season. CTM national correspondent Jerika Nuckin is here with more on that story. So, Jerika, what do the experienced climbers say now about conditions on that mountain? Well, they say that it's really difficult no matter how ready you are for this trip. We spoke to someone on the same expedition as Chris Coolidge, who says the climber was fully prepared for his own mission to scale the world's tallest mountain, but he was not prepared for what he saw when he got there. Too many people dangerously vying for the same experience. It's the top of the world. But on an icy platform no wider than two ping pong tables at over 29,000 feet, capturing the moment can get dangerous. That's what made it scary for me is that there was a large group on the summit at the time I got there. There was a, a subgroup that was very rude and unruly and was basically pushing so that they could get better pictures of themselves. And I just thought, this is not safe. But before you even make it to the top, traffic jams on the final few feet, an area known as the death zone. At that altitude, there is not enough oxygen for humans to breathe, so vital supplies are used up while the climbers just wait. Too many are navigating too small a space, and Dr. Doring says too many of them don't know what they're doing. I was surprised at how many people were, you know, above uh, 26,000 feet and had really were obviously were either not fit or not experienced and probably shouldn't have been there. During witness firsthand the deadly combination. And I certainly wasn't prepared to pass dead bodies that were attached to the safety line. It, it was very difficult. On May 29, 1953, when Sir Edmund Hillary became the first climber to reach the summit with Sherpa Tenzing Norgay, it was global news. 66 years, almost to the day, scaling the world's tallest mountain has become an Instagram moment, a feat not just for the best, but for almost anyone with a bucket list. And we should add that Dr. Doring told us that despite all the well-documented problems on the mountain, he does not think that Chris Coolish died as a result of the overcrowding, nor was he inexperienced. Coolish was extremely fit, even at 62, and was climbing with what he described as probably the best guide team on the mountain. Anthony? Still can't get over the pictures of that line up there, Jerika. Amazing. Thank you.